Hey guys, what's up? It's Merc here from Poolshed Games, and today I want to talk to you about two things. First thing I want to talk to you about is the fact that we are actually using our paint set. Don't think that we bought it and we've put it up on a shelf and we're just looking at it like, ooh, it's pretty. We are actually using it, slowly but surely. Uh, with work, it's a little hard to find time to, to put brush to model and and uh, make, sh you know, make things pretty, but uh, we're actually doing that this time around. Um, it sort of brought a new level of excitement, I feel, to the games we're playing because I'm pretty excited to get my guys painted and see them painted up on the table instead of just the regular plastic and metal guys. Uh, and the second thing I want to talk about is the difficulty of trying to learn a new role-playing game with only one core rulebook. Uh, that'll be the second part of the video, uh, and yeah, just yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I have my Aleph here. They're the minis I've I've got a base coat of paint on. Uh, I have the three prime colors I want to use for them on them. Uh, I didn't go with your typical Aleph paint scheme because I wasn't feeling that cream colored look. Uh, I I just didn't like it. Uh, I wasn't sure I could paint it because I'm not a experienced veteran painter, despite how long I've been playing this, these games. So, uh, I got my, like I said, I have my Aleph here. Uh, this is one of my tack bots. I went with just a, a real simple blue and black paint scheme. Uh, I really like the way it turned out. They're not near done. Like I said, these are just the base coats. Uh, they look almost like futuristic police force from, uh, any, you know, any number of anime. Kind of Ghost in the Shell look to them. Uh... Like I said, I gotta ink them yet, and I wanna do some dry brushing. Uh, I gotta figure out a highlight color. I wanna wanna get a bright color on these to kind of make them stand out and pop a little bit. Because right now, with just the blue and the black, they're a little dull. Not like there's monotone. It's not no bright color to kind of bring it out. I was thinking maybe like a white. Like I could maybe try to freehand stencil like numbers on there like uh, squad car markings on today's police vehicles do it on the tag bots but I don't know if I could pull that off so what I might do is little bits on their on like their shoulder wings uh, that I have kinda painted the black right now I don't know if you can you can make it out on him those little spots on his shoulders I was thinking about painting like red Kind of for like a you know siren look, flashing lights. Um, you know this is my Naga. Right now he's, like I said, base coated with his the blue and black, and I went with a Idrian flesh for their skin tone. Uh, and it's Signar Signar base and Bane base for the blue and the black. This is my Deva uh, functionary. Uh, I went with ember orange for the hair. Uh, I gotta. That takes a couple coats because it doesn't cover darker colors well. And then I have my my Asora, who again I kind of went with the, the you know the blue and black. Um, these models I think because they have the flesh tone and the the different colored hair, I don't feel they need like a highlight color as much as the tack bots do. Um, and I think the hair I'm gonna, you know, make a little bit brighter. I want to put maybe some pink in there or some red to kind of go with that that uh that uh anime look. Uh but I had fun painting them. It's the first time I've put paint on models probably in two years, two and a half, maybe three years. For a long time there, uh when I was playing Warhammer Fantasy in 40k, um I just didn't want to paint. I was focused more on playing the game. And the painting part of the hobby didn't really do anything for me. I don't know if it was because maybe there was so many guys and they all kind of had to look similar. Uh, or maybe I just I knew I was only in it for the game and I didn't really care about much of the other stuff. But now with like Infinity and uh, War Machine and uh, Dystopian Legions, I really want to get paint on the models. I really want them to look real on the tabletop rather than just boring hunks of metal and plastic and resin. Um, I think it'll make our games more fun and since we're going to be doing battle reports it would be pretty boring to watch the Lich Lord and myself push around 
on painted minis. So we're not gonna we're not gonna be doing that. Um, the second thing I want to talk about in this video is starting a new role playing game that no one in your group has played before, and only having one core rule book. Just don't do it. It's it's very hard. I mean, unless you have a small group like a DM and two players, it's incredibly hard to to get a new role playing game going with only one core rule book. Um, my gaming group, there's four players and a DM, and we're, I think, two nights into our, our new campaign in the Iron Kingdom's book, and I'm confused. I'm not really sure how leveling up works. I'm not really sure what my character can do. Um, I know my dad, who plays in the group, I mean, he never really uh, gets too in-depth to what his character can do. He kind of plays the tanky smash type, but even there... He's not really sure what all his abilities are. Uh, the Lich Lord, he's in our group. He seems to be kind of on the same level where we don't really know what our characters can do. And I feel like if you don't have that second book or that you can use to, to, to kind of share, it makes it really hard. Because your DM, with a new system, needs to have that book to take home and read and plan your adventures. Well, the rest of your group really needs a copy, too, to be able to look and figure out what they're doing. Um, so I took it upon myself, I ordered uh, I ordered a second copy of the rulebook for us here. But um, this is different if you're talking about like D&D &D, uh, or a D20 system, like D&D, &D, D20 Modern, Darwin's World, Pathfinder. Uh, well Pathfinder, you really kind of want two of the, the core rulebook, but like D&D, &D, um, I think because most people have played D&D, &D, it's sort of like the gateway drug, if you will, into role-playing games. If you're setting up with a group to play that, especially if it's 3rd or 3.5, which I think most people play because it was around for a while, you have a pretty good idea how it works. I mean, I know I can quote some things when I'm sitting down with people out of those rule books, just off the top of my head to help my DM or my, my other players to know what they're doing, uh, there for a while I had your your stat bonuses. I had those somewhat memorized, which is terrible to say, but I did just because you got so used to making characters that you would uh, you know you'd memorize them. You knew what uh, 13, 14, or 15 to 16, or 17 to 18. You knew that was a plus two, plus three, or plus four bonus, which I think that's actually what it is. I think it's 13 to 14 is plus two and uh, 15 to 16 is plus 3, and 17 to 18 is plus 4. I could be wrong, but that's, uh, that was 3.5. It's it's not the new edition, because I haven't played the new edition. Um, but in the long run, you know, if you're a group of veteran gamers, or you have a couple vets in your group that have played a system before, I don't think it's necessary to have more than uh, one of each of the core rulebooks. But if it's a new system that nobody's played before, I think you should really have at least two of the core rulebook. Or whatever rulebook is that has the player's player information in it. Because I know as a player, I like to read through the rules, and I like to know exactly what my characters can do. I like to know where I can take my characters. Um, because I don't like to feel like my character is just this hodgepodge jack-of-all-trades, master of none. I like to have a clear idea where I'm going with them to make a story out of it. Um, and I feel, you know, like in a new RPG, you need the rulebook to do that. Um, so, like I said, I got a, a second copy of that rulebook. When it gets here, uh, I'll probably do a review for you guys um, so you can see what it looks like, because, I mean, it is a nice-looking rulebook. Privateer Press put a lot of time into it, and it looks good. Um, another thing I might do a review of when it gets here is I got Smash Up. And I got the expansion to smash up, which is, I believe, level 9,000. Which, you know, thinly veiled Dragon Ball Z joke there. Uh, I mean, I'll do a review of those. Hopefully, the Lich Lord and I, I've, we've been saying this for the past three, four weeks now. Uh, we're going to get our, our, our mobile camera soon, so we're not stuck using my, my laptop webcam. And then we'll actually be able to set it up and bring you videos of us playing board games, uh, battle reports like Dystopian Legions and Infinity and War Machine, um, which in the beginning, not all those models are going to be painted. Uh, we apologize in advance, but that's a lot of models. 
to paint, and we don't have that much time. Uh, also going to be bringing you a review of some more dystopian Legion stuff, because Neil over at the War Store is an evil person, and he's running a sale on, dystopi on Spartan Games and Hawk Wargaming stuff, which is Drop Zone Commander, and then that's Hawk, and for... Spartan Games, you have Dystopian Legion, Dystopian Wars, Uncharted Seas, Firestorm Armada, and I think the terrain is included in that sale, which it's an extra 10% off, and how could I say no after playing Dystopian Legions last week and finding out how awesome it was? Uh, I got basically everything for my FSA that I could that wasn't sold out. <laughs> so no field piece, no heavy machine guns. And I couldn't bring myself to buy the, the either the transport of the tank, but everything else, yeah. Um, so hopefully uh, I might do like an army shot of that at some point, put up on our Facebook. And uh, yeah. But those were the things I wanted to tell you guys about today. Like I said, we are using our paint set. It's a slow process, but we are doing it. And uh, I just wanted to talk about how important I think it is when you start a new role-playing system that no one's played before to have more than one copy of the rulebook because I think it just it makes it easier on the players and the DM, because the players can take care of leveling up themselves. The DM doesn't have to hold their hand so much. And then the DM can just focus on running the game. But uh, that's it. Uh, I think I'm going to go um, and either play King of Tokyo or Level 7 with Lich Lord. Um, we're going to make another video tonight at some point as well. Uh, hopefully you guys liked the video, and hopefully if you did, you'll subscribe or comment or give us a like because we appreciate that. And we'll see you next time here on Pool Shade Games.